JPM Assault coming at you. This is my custom Moisin Nagant. Now some of you have been asking for a little more how-to of what I did to make the stock work with this rifle. So here it goes. Excuse my nose. I had surgery on my nose for a deviated septum. So I'm a little nasally. But you asked, I'll give. So little review update. I got my cheek piece in. As you can see it slides in. Covers over that nicely. Didn't get my ostrich leather though. I was a little ticked off about that, but I'll get into that more later. Anyway, I got this thing semi ready to go, so I'll get it apart a little bit. And I'll tear this down and get into it. This might take two shots. Two parts. Basically, you loosen up a couple screws here and here, and this slides right off. You can see with this, I just, of course, I elevated that with some kitty hair, wrapped it in some nice jacket leather, a good generic jacket out of the Goodwill. Don't mind cutting those up. A couple bolts, and that pops off. Of course, there's, it's sectional. So you can break all these pieces into, you know, make it, you can use just this. And you can see right here, there's a big old steel weight in it. This, uh, you can pull it out. I like it in there. It seems to make the weight a little more equal to the back. Um, there's also a little bit longer ones in this area right here. There's two of them. There's like one here and one here. Completely leave those out, otherwise your gun's gonna weigh about five pounds too much. Because it is pretty heavy. So we'll set that aside for now. Come back over here. The bolt comes out like normal. Simple. And then we'll take this off. Again, sorry about the nasally. I had a surgery just four or five days ago, just before Christmas. How fun for me. Anyway, pull that out so you can see here. Oh. Now, eh. that part comes off pretty easy. So basically just a little wiggle wiggle and it comes right out as you can see. Let's set that back here and push down on the spring, the follower and there it is. And that comes out like normal. So you can see it's basically no modification to the rifle itself. So what we got is an airsoft stock. Now originally there was, you can see the seam right there. That was split right down the middle, completely through all the way to the end. You can see a little bit of it there. Yep, and on down the back. Across the back and all the way around. So basically, it was two halves. So, what I did to get this to work is obviously, I can't separate this one. This one's permanent, not coming apart. But you have two halves, and I found it easiest you do one half completely and I did the side that was opposite of the uh, bolt that way uh, you know because then you could add that one afterwards and I don't know I just found that side easier to work on first so what you do is you get it apart and you get all the airsoft crap out of there for the little girly boys that like little fakey guns and like I said, there's a couple bars in here. I just ditched those 
and uh, then basically from about this area back you just want to shave down the plastic so it's just a little bit lower you don't have to take it all the way down you can leave some of the plastic in for support you know strength and then the tricky part is right in this area to about to about here from about this area to this area is the hard part um, underneath here on the airsoft this part's all open too this part was not I had to make that and it's not too bad um, the tools I used was an air grinder just a simple $15 air grinder and when you're sanding on this you know you got your half you just kind of push down on it and take it down a little ways um, another tool I used for getting into areas was a die grinder this is just another $15 $20 air tool and another tool I used was a obviously a uh, Where'd that other thing go? Oh, a Dremel tool with bits on it like this. Now, this actually goes to a, a air tool with a collar for that. But Dremel also has, you know, they're not as big as this, but they'll work. This tool is, you need it. it you can get in there and just really smooth out the inside of it and stuff. Uh, you definitely need one of these. They're, oh, they're a few bucks at a tool store. Or I don't remember where I got this. I think I might even have got this at Walmart. You can get all these tools at Walmart. Uh, just simple, cheap air tools that don't have to be high dollar. And then, uh, so anyway, the other thing I used, a lot of you were wondering what products I used to glue it all back together and make it strong and kitty hair is it's an automotive body filler like marine grade and you can see here it's three pounds volume by volume it's three pounds so basically if you use this whole can in here which I almost did there's there's maybe this much left in the bottom of this thing and uh, and then this is the hardener for about a golf ball of this you use about an inch little bead of this uh, mix it up if you use too much of this it'll harden on you so fast you won't have time to get it in there so a little bit less won't hurt a little too much if, if you're somewhere cold you, you want to use maybe a quarter inch more if you're somewhere really hot use a quarter inch less of a bead a little eighth inch bead by an inch long and you can see the hole is about that big so a bead that size inch long for moderate climate I live in a colder climate so and if you use a little bit less it, it just takes a little bit longer to dry for cold so don't worry about it it will get hard oh boy will it get hard it sands really easy with one of these you can sand it down a little 36 grit on a Rolock disc and this is 50 grit they have 50 36 50 grit if you don't want to go so fast a little bit slower but more cautious and and i use that for the primary fill to get the uh i actually have some of it here that's still visible let's see if i can get in here i get some light yeah you can see it kind of a textury green kind of looks like cow shit that is kitty hair and it is it's hard as a rock it's it's hard to damage it and what you do and you can see i left these areas hollow because they're just you really don't need a bunch of support up here so what i did was strip out the inside as necessary of course you want to be careful you want to mind your you know there's like steel collars back here for the bolts you know that go in so you don't want to grind those out obviously and you want to be careful the you know the little 
plastic risers and the spacers in there and there's like little slip washers for the the metal so as it tightens it pinches up and then uh but basically you get rid of everything back here you just gut all this and what i did of course you know that line right here you want to get like stir sticks and you, you want to have a pile just a mountain of stir sticks and you want to start cutting them to fit all through here lengthwise because when the energy shoots it shoots back so the energy is all pushed into the back so you want your stir sticks and they don't seem like much you know they're just little eighth inch you know the ones you get for free when you buy some paint and uh, uh, you, you cut up 50, 60, 70 of them, whatever. The more you get in there, the less kitty hair you use, the lighter the gun will be. And then, uh, and you get that all done to where it's not quite, you know, you wanna, you wanna stay at the halfway mark. You wanna be just, just a little shy of it. I mean, we're talking less than an eighth of an inch. And then um, that way uh, you can use another product to seal it up. So we're coming up on about 10 minutes here, if not more. So I'm going to cut this one short and I'm going to come back with a second part. So hang tight and I'll be right back. Thank you.